Ah. No, hold on. Never perfect. Oh, hi, Suzanne. Hey, Hello. Georgia. Hey. Who else is here? Oh, Judy's, oh, well, everybody's just getting ready, I guess. Hey. Hi, Judy. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Good. I know you said you were going to be really busy. I am very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask again till January. Okay. <laughs> the answer will be, you can hear the same answer, but you'll hear the same answer until January. Okay. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Kristen and Jesse. Hey, how's it going? You guys ready for Thanksgiving? I'm going somewhere else. All I have to do is make Perfect. pies and bring them. So <laughs> I'm getting off easy this year. How about you? I'm hosting, so oh, <laughs> yes. <call> me. <clears throat> let me know way. if you want any recipes. <laughs> I will. I'll, yeah. What's your specialty? <laughs> I like the whole thing. I've got a really good cranberry recipe and I've got a really good, um, it's a coleslaw, but made with Brussels sprouts and apples, it, but kids love it. My nephews eat it. I was like shocked. Um, I might hit you up for that one because I it's 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 a big hit and several people in the family who hate cranberries love this recipe. It has dark cherries in it in addition to cranberries. Um, good. And what else? My stuffing, I just do I wing it, but <clears throat> always chestnuts and cranberries too. What kind of pie are you making? Uh, pumpkin, pecan, and apple. If I can motivate for the third one, so. <laughs> a lot of work. It's a bigger, yeah, you know, once you're doing it, it's not that hard. I, I usually, I, usually for Thanksgiving, I will actually make more than that because we have a big family. So we've had up to like, you know, I don't know, 25 people. Maybe oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. last year was very quiet, of course, you know, with COVID. It was, a, then there was the year of the Woolsey fire when we stayed home in the dark because we had no electricity. We had pasta and sauce out of a jar and a pumpkin pie from Ralph's. It was absolutely abominable. <laughs> but, but we had a home. We had a house and it was safe and there was great thanks being given. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Brittany, uh, do we know if um, anyone else is uh, going to attend, like Dane or Alicia? Dane was having computer problems. He's going to be here as soon as he can. He emailed. Okay. Oh, I think yeah. we... And then um, I did not hear from Alicia. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think we can get started then. Um, so I would like to call, uh, like to call to order the Malibu Parks and Recreation Committee uh, Commission regular meeting of November 16th. 2021. The meeting is being held by teleconference due to COVID-19 pandemic, and we appreciate everyone's patience as we navigate the Zoom meeting process. <clears throat> Commissioners and city staff are participating from remote locations, and all votes will be taken by roll call. <clears throat> Members of the public can participate in the meeting or watch it by going to malibucity.org slash virtual meeting. At this screen, you can click on the tab to either just watch the meeting or to sign up and speak on particular items. Those who wish to speak during the meeting should follow the instructions at malibucity.org slash virtual meeting. Please make sure you visit Malibu, oops, visit, visit malibucity.org virtual meeting early enough to sign up to speak and download the Zoom application. Recording secretary will call on those who have signed up to speak when the item is called, so you must be present in the Zoom meeting to be recognized. Commissioners, if you have comments to make during this meeting, please raise your hand and I will call on you in turn so we can make our discussion clear for the record and the public. Okay, well, uh, roll call please. 
Commissioner Godeman. Here. Commissioner Via Blanca. Here. Vice Chair Peak. Here. Chair Goldfarb. Here. <clears throat> Commissioner Scope Hammer is absent. He's working on signing in. Hopefully he'll join us. Okay. Um, well, um, Suzanne, would you like to render the book? Yep, there it is. <laughs> there we go. Certainly. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And uh, let's see. Um, now we have, uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? I will move to approve the agenda. Um, second? I'll second it. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Villablanca? Yes. <clears throat> Vice Chair Peak? Yes. Commissioner Goldeman? Yes. Chair Goldfarb? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, report on posting of agenda. The agenda was posted on November 10th, 2021. Um, it doesn't look like there's any ceremonial presentations, correct? Correct. Um, and uh, are there any written or oral communications from the public and commissioners? No, we do not have any. Okay. Um, consent calendar. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? I will move to approve the consent calendar. And a second. Uh, I will second the motion. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Villablanca? Yes. Commissioner Godeman? Yes. Vice Chair Pete? Yes. Chair Goldfarb? Yes. <clears throat> motion carried. Thank you. Um, so it doesn't look like there's any old business. And so we will move on to new business. And we have the mid-year activity report for the commission. Correct. And I'm gonna share my screen here. So let me know if everybody can, can see the, the screen full. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Great. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, the item before you is the mid-year activity report that is presented to the city council each year uh, at our mid-year, around our mid-year of the fiscal year. I want to say our mid, our mid-year budget review, which is typically around the same time that we do this. So, um, but it's the middle of our fiscal year, and what we do is we provide the city council with an update on items that the commission has accomplished during the first half of the fiscal year. Uh, just a quick note, I, I think most of the commissioners, if not all, know this, but our commission, our fiscal year runs from July 1st to June 30th of the year. So as we hit January, that is the middle of our fiscal year. So if there's any confusion on that, um, I hope that's, uh, I hope it's clear. So as I mentioned, uh, the summary, uh, it's a summary of activities for the first six months of the fiscal year. And it's based on the council approved assignments that are, are given to the commission at the beginning of each fiscal year. Uh, this is also your opportunity not only to, to look at the, the list of completed assignments that we're giving them, but also to propose new assignments. If you have any new assignments that you'd like to propose, similar to how we do at the beginning of the fiscal year, uh, we're certainly willing to take that request. And then uh, once we have this, we will take this mid-year report um, that to the city council in, in January 2020, as I said, when we review the mid-year portion of the budget. So uh, just a quick summary of the commission activities. I know the commission's been involved in a lot of things, but uh, the Legacy Park Rehabilit Rehabilitation Project is obviously a key project for the department. Um, our earth-friendly management policy and the working group, the website... <laughs> Uh, all of those things. Uh, the review of department programs and projects, especially with COVID, has been really key for us. So uh, everything from um, protocols related to COVID-19 or, you know, whether it's skate park or, or things like that, um, 
that the commission has reviewed. And then of course the Jake Corregian Citizenship Award is also something the commission does each year that we, we've essentially completed as far as the commission goes. Uh, the final part of that is our, our Trinkus field removal of non-native species, plant species that we talked about. And then of course the Charmley Wilderness Park Trail uh, clearance, erosion mitigation work that's been going on for, for quite a long time. So um, in addition to the bluebird boxes and trail cameras, which I know um, the commission has heard some about and, and we're excited to give you a, a couple of small updates on some of that stuff tonight during our staff report. So um, outside of that, there's not a whole lot else to, um, to present, but I'm happy to answer any questions and, and discuss any items with the commission. Uh, Jesse, what about a note of skate park progress? Yeah, well, I guess that's something that program. falls under the community services department projects. That's okay. where we, we put that. But. Okay. Um, and I guess um, in terms of the, the clearance, is there uh, of the um, invasives at Trancas, are you going to elucidate any more on that? Do you have any more information? Um, we have some we have some information as for that we'll provide during our staff. Uh, you update. guys, Dane is in the waiting room. Sorry to interrupt you. It's okay. I actually let him in. I don't know if he if he was able if it kicked him off or what, but um, we'll see if he gets in here. Oh, let me admit him in. Weird. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> um, so we would provide a, a staff update on that during the staff update, but um, that yeah. is included in our in oh. our completed work here. Thank you. So if there's no questions, uh, I guess we will go on to the staff updates. Well, do, do we have anything we want to add or change or are we happy? Well, I just, I, you know, we don't know the, like the details. Is this exactly what you would present? Uh, Jesse, or would you provide more detail to the council? Yeah, the in the if you look in the attachment for the staff report, um, and I actually can share that with you here if you give me one second. Um, yeah, I, I just wondered what you know what specifically you'll present. You'll present that we document. would present exactly what was attached, um, and you can actually see the attachment to the item. Give me one second here. I'll share it. It won't be the the coolest screen share ever as it's coming from my uh, OneNote, but you see if I can. Um, get it here for you so you can see the exact language of that. Yes, I think my, my question on that was, um, and I did read that, thank you. Um, is there more detail for each of the items? No, typically each commission will submit a memo just like this. Okay. And it has essentially what is a part of your assignment. And then what happens is, is we ask, uh, typically we have the chair come to the meeting. And if the council has further questions on some of those items, uh, we'll actually, it'll, they'll give you a chance to come on and say, hey, here's, if they have additional questions or info, then you would provide that. Mm -hmm. But typically we stick fairly close to what's in the, the actual um, assignment that was provided by council. And and so you'll see, we give a little bit of, of essentially what the item that was approved was, and then some, some feedback. So you can see on Earth Friendly, we put reviewed and provided feedback for the Earth Friendly Management Policy. And then we put in, including a new web page on the city's website, established a working group to provide recommendations to the, and, and established a working group to provide recommendations to the commission. So um, looking at this, if there's something additional you'd like to add, we could certainly do that. Um, Maybe in the, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's all I've got, I guess, if you're interested in adding more. But, um, Jesse, I would say for the earth-friendly management, I mean, because as you know, when we started out this year, we were not doing what we were supposed to do, you know, what was required in the earth-friendly management policy. And now we are having regular meetings regarding the EFM. So I think that's important to point out that, you know, we, for the first time are, you know, I mean, and I understand it's, you know, COVID and Woolsey and all those things. So. I think it's important to say we are now, you know, doing what is required for EFM in terms of you know, something short like that. Yeah, you can think of some wording, but just that we're regularly meeting to oversee the earth friendly management policy. Because that was not happening until this year. Yeah, I, think, I agree. I think that's a good point. 
Um, I, and I just think it would be nice under community services. I think the skate, the skate park is such a big thing, you know, and I think it's the first new, you know, uh, rec facility we've had in Malibu in the 21 years that I've lived here. So, you know, I just think it might, in, you could just say, you know, including um, opening the, um, the temporary skate park and, you know, continuing progress towards the permanent skate park for when 20, can we say 2022? I, I just, because I think that's a really big thing. Uh, and that's been a lot of work on you and staff's part. So I would highlight that to the community because it's the only chance they get to see that we're really doing something, you know? So yeah. <clears throat> you do so many wonderful things. I just I don't think they should be buried, you know? Sure. Yeah. And maybe, I, I don't know if you even want to say that, you know, your programs have been, um, you've continued programs with, uh, you know, excellent attendance, even, you know, during COVID. Cause again, I, I think that's a real accomplishment for the staff. Yeah, especially the sea wolves, right? Like how those are at record numbers, right? Judy, is that something that you're talking yeah, about? You know, I think all of them, right? Like the seniors, everything, you know, I mean, I wish you could tell more about all the great things that have been done, but I think again, it's important to know that, you know, um, programs and projects, have continued, you know, uh, and had excellent attendance despite COVID. I will say, and we can certainly try and find ways to add some of this in, um, some of the things we try to keep it as in what the commission itself accomplished. I don't mean that negatively at all, just right. um, yeah. where if you were prompted to oversee programs, maybe we could add something and said oversaw programs and provided additional feedback regarding COVID restrictions and, and things like that. I just didn't, what we didn't want to, I, I think that's, we tried not to get too deep into every little thing, but I think adding some of those items is certainly possible. Um, I, I just, like I said, I, I think, I think it would be nice to say something about the skateboard because I think that's yeah. a, a big thing. And I, I know it's under, folks on the, mm -hmm. maybe under the reviewed and provided feedback regarding community service department programs and projects, you could add like a highlight. Yeah. Like yeah, that's what I have that here. Um, you know, something. You know, temporary and permanent skate park and then continue a review of the project and the programs related to that through 2022. I think it was Chair B or Commissioner Villablanca that said that. So yeah, because it opened, the skate park opened up during the pandemic, correct? Correct. Yeah, so then this, right, the past, what, three months is the first time that it's been open without restrictions. I'm just saying you could I think it's been a little longer than that, but I'm not, I don't know how much. Uh, but I'm right, much, like right. I'm saying something. <laughs> it is related to just this first half of the fiscal year too. So that's something to, to keep in mind. So it did, the, the skate park, the temporary skate park, for example, opened uh, last fiscal year. But yes, during okay. the pandemic. Because, so yeah, it, oh, would, that's right. it would be the things. And so I was actually had to think for a second, was that this year? Or was it well, we year? did, um, but we did review like the, you know, the landscaping plan for the um, mm -hmm. permanent skate park. Yeah. I, I mean, I just think it's important for people to know, like, because people, right, they don't know where the skate park's at. There hasn't been an update on that in a long time in city council. Yeah. So, and it's, you know, uh, review the landscaping and it's pending planning commission next step, something, I don't know, some, just something to say that like, it's going, you know, and it's coming. Yeah, I think, I think we should highlight it. I agree. Yeah, I do. We'll definitely add that. And I would even say, uh, like on the trail clearance, maybe you could just put um, the amount of distance. There must be, somebody must be able to approximate how many miles of trails that were cleared. And you would really only have to put in the mileage just to show people how impressive it was. Yeah. Or, or what percentage of the trails? Is that easier? You know, like they're done, aren't they? Not completely, but almost. Well, like, you know, we will be providing 95. an update on this during yeah. the staff yeah. update. To get <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Uh, in yeah. approximate. No one's going to go out there and measure it, Jesse. Like if you say 90%, that just, that's, yeah, we do I, I mean, have again, that I just think it says we're yeah. getting somewhere, you know, that's not a problem at all. We can yeah. certainly have that info. We have that info as well. Okay. Does anybody else have any thoughts about um, any other? I'm really glad that we have the, uh, you know, the 
planning process back in here, even in a limited way. Let the city council tell us again that we can't talk about the future of our park property. I like, you know, I really think we need to keep pushing on this because it's very frustrating not to be able to talk about. What we oh, well, that that would be for new objectives, right? Yeah, I think that's going on to the next piece, right? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I just, well, part of the news, it says we have a better budget than we thought we were going to have. So that's good. <laughs> if the Malibu Times is correct. That's, that's correct. That's the update they gave it last week, city council, city yeah. council meeting, in the budget presentation. So yes, uh, much better news than we anticipated. Um, they're not waving the, the checkered flag yet or the celebratory flag yet, but <laughs> we think it's going to be, um, it, it is just better than we expected it to be, which is a At positive least. thing. At least they're not hanging black flags at half mast, you know, that's kind of Correct. where we've been, so. Um, I don't know, do we? Well, that's number four, really. Number four is facilitate public outreach and design meetings regarding amenities and placement of park enhancements or equipment in city parks. Yes, I'm glad. Or does that, only, does that only apply to established city parks and not? Like, because technically, like, oh, no, you know, there's nine. Uh, review the park's master plan and make recommendations regarding the there priority of facilities and amenities at existing and potential future city parks. Yeah, so so it's in there. Yeah, it's good. I'm glad. I'm just looking back on the um, previous uh, document. Um, if you look at number thirteen, is is that not worth maybe mentioning? that, um, which might be of interest to people watching, um, that we will have a joint meeting with the Youth Commission. And um, yeah, to remind them that, you know, participation is welcome. We haven't done, yeah, we haven't done Yeah, that. I think it's, Something yeah, I would wait until that's actually happened since yeah. this is a kind of the accomplishments of what's happened so far. All right, okay. <clears throat> so um, under this, <laughs> I'll be a rabbit hole. under number 14. We could also discuss if we had funding available doing something in the in the Heathercliff property. I, I'm thinking of the little ravines there, which would not able to, I would not talk about, you know, emphasizing areas that we know nothing can be done with in terms of no one's gonna argue that we can't put a ball field or a building or whatever, but we'd be allowed to do that under 14. Yeah, that's right. Because that, I mean, that that one ravine is just so full of palm trees. Boy, I would love to get those out of there. Yes, and they are a fire risk. So. They are a fire risk, and there's going to be a hundred more if we don't get them, you know. Yep, yep, there's, that's incontrovertible. And, you know, the mentioning um, the fire risk, I think, is important. I know that was a very dramatic uh, event with the Woolsey fire in that ravine. So I think that would be appreciated. Yeah, as I think, well, that, that gets into, but I mean, I, we can talk about some potential funding that now might be available to do that, so. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments um, on the plans? Dane, <laughs> anything from you or Alicia? I Dane, I don't think, did Dane get in? Yeah, I'm in. Oh, Hi, everybody. Welcome. Sorry, I'm so late. I tried real hard. I've been sitting yeah. on this computer for an hour trying to get it to work, so. Thank goodness. Um, I, I just kind of have a thought about, can we make a motion to discuss chapter, you know, number nine in a future parks and rec meeting, right? I know that that's not what this is about, but here it is on our, on our thing that we're supposed to do. I feel like, uh, we've got some accordance on what, you know, we might like to see as a group and try and move that forward a little bit, you know, um, you know, it's here on our thing. When are we going to discuss, you know, recommendations for, for facilities and potential future parks? I know last, uh, you know, when this came in the summer, the council said that there was not funding to do this. And so we were not allowed. Now, I don't know if they're going to pick at number nine again, but if they don't, I'm, I second what Dane is saying. I think it should be something on our agenda. 
so so is this a list that that's been approved by the city council or is this i'm i'm sorry yes. again i'm late so maybe i missed the first part but if yeah this like, is posted on the web on the city website dane this is the list that we started our year with right okay so then it's it's here on our on our agenda um i'd like to make a motion to discuss number nine at the next at the next uh meeting Right. I feel like at the very least, we've got an idea of what we'd like to see. Maybe we can just move it along like that. Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I thought the city council took that one off of our list because they said there was no funding. So, uh, well, Jesse, what, what was the uh, what was the mechanism? If I recall correctly, the the main the main part of that was they weren't ready to dis, to have discussions tailored towards the vacant properties right they weren't they weren't ready to hold those those meetings and go through the process of developing the vacant properties because there wasn't the funding to do so so i know that's why the language was was tailored that way and i can certainly we can certainly go back and send the reports to the commission <laughs> like um i just remember that was kind of the the theory behind that was just hey yes we want this commission weighing in on all things parks related, right? But right now it was more of a focus on, um, and you could see in number nine, review the parks master plan and make recommendations regarding the priority of facilities and amenities at existing and potential future city parks. So it's definitely for you to review the parks master plan and look at the things that are on there and decide, hey, are these, is this list you know, still accurate, right? And some of the things we've completed, and I think we've briefly discussed this, but, um, you know, what do we want to see? But as far as planning for the specific vacant properties and, and deciding that stuff, I think was their hold back on that. Oh. So, and I, I know they haven't determined which, I guess, which direction they want to take, how those properties would potentially be reviewed and developed, right? If it's going to be a consultant that leads a public review process or um, how that would work. So I think that's just the, the hold up right now. Okay, so why is it okay for the Public Works Commission to discuss what happens at those properties, but it isn't okay for us? That's what I don't quite understand. What, are, what, are, what is Public Works discussing, Susan? Oh, they discussed putting the uh, the tow yard on various and sundry uh, properties, oh. and, and nobody swatted them back on that. They got a lot of blowback from the community when they wanted to put it at the equestrian center property, but... Um, I, I just feel like well, like there's like a double standard there, and and uh, Suzanne, I would say why, why don't could, we try and agendize it, and then maybe we can come up maybe we can come up with a consensus on our group what we might like to do with one of the properties, and then we can just make a recommendation. Is that how it works? I mean, why not? I you know honestly, I think the simplest thing is what we did with the skate park is we pick maybe what's the next. I mean. The problem is the next thing that I think would be discussed that you could place would be the pool, but that's like probably that is the most expensive thing we could do. So I know there's not money for that right now, but um, but it but but if that's what we think and we've got a you know if we can get together and decide on something that we think is the right thing to do, then we can at least put that recommendation out there and then they'll have it right. Like um, I I don't know what the right way to push that forward is, but it seems like the you know, the right thing to do for us, right? We're discussing what we're supposed to do with a piece of property. It's within our purview. It's right here on the agenda. Why not talk about it? See if we can't come up with a consensus within our group and say, hey, we're suggesting this and we can come up with some good points and, and try and see if we can't, I don't know, get some action. Yeah, I would also like to tour the La Paz property because, you know, we didn't have that in hand um, when we did our tour. Um, and I think that's a kind of a smaller piece that might be easier to, but whatever. I, um, so I don't, find, I don't find these giant surveys really all that helpful. And well, I will say one thing, if we are going to agendize it, then I would like to ask that we have the, um, the you know, we, we really are gonna need the census, um, you know, the, meaning the age groups and where our age population is going. And, um, and I think, you know, how many kids we have in school, because I, obviously, you know, um, ball fields are something that the way things were, you know, um, we, you know, we definitely needed a few more of certain types, but I don't know that that's still true, because I don't know how many kids we have. It seems like we're dwindling a lot on our young population. 
Um, so I, I would think if we want to agendize it, I, again, we, we're, we're kind of agenda, we're talking about it, we're not even supposed to be talking about it, but I think to talk about it, you really, I think you need that information. I don't know if there, I know there's a census done for the library. Isn't that done every year, Jesse? Because that was the last census I saw, but it's still a demographic census. So it's, you, you know. I actually don't know the answer to that offhand. Um, I know there, I know we're still waiting on the census data from, from the U.S. government and the U.S. No, which is Census enough. Bureau. We're still waiting on that, but um, I'm not familiar with the library one, but we could certainly look into that. And school enrollment, we could get from the schools and, you know, like a comparative, like what it was, yeah. you know, right. like that's not years. always a great indicator though because a yeah. lot of our kids go to private schools and they're not going to be you know on the yeah and True. Um, True. with them with the mandates and the whole pandemic thing a lot of people have taken their kids out of public school so i agree with um suzanne it's not going to be point. The best. good point it's not going to be well, the best indicator uh, best indicator might be enrollment in sports then you know like because we're supposed to look at that once a year anyway so and I would second, I mean, I would second um, Dane's motion to put it on the agenda. If we could make, if we could make that motion um, during commissioner reports or future agenda items, that would be yeah. better from the minutes perspective. Right. Yeah. Uh, let, let's do that. Um, Jesse, um, I thought that uh, we should have, a, at the very least, we can have a review of what the master plan was because, you know, most of us don't, or some of us at least, don't know exactly what is it was in the master plan and that just might be a baseline i think we'd be expected to to know that um that's a that is georgia it is on the city website if you wish to read it i actually I believe we, actually we emailed sent, that out recently yeah Brittany also sent it out yeah to uh, i believe two months ago yeah uh, and it's on the city website okay but we could do it again we could certainly mail it again or if the commission wishes to agendize it um we would include that as an attachment yeah i think that would be that would be very helpful. Okay, well, um, let me get to the end then. So maybe we should move on to our next topic then. Yeah. yeah. And I know there wasn't, I know there wasn't a, a technical recommended item here, but uh, just to follow up, if, it, uh, if there's a consensus from the commission, a consensus would be fine uh, to add that language as we discussed regarding uh, a little bit more specific language for the uh, skate park projects. Uh, the temporary and the permanent ones, and then the distance on the trail clearance at Legacy, and I'm sorry, the trail clearance at Charmley. There we go. And uh, the language to continue reviewing the permanent skate park project as it's um, a part of your plan. I think there's a consensus. I certainly approve of that. So can we say we'll make a motion out of, I'll make a motion out of what Jesse just said. <laughs> you actually don't, I actually don't need a motion okay. personally, just to, con, that's why I say that there's a consensus from the commission. Yeah. I, I see some yeah. nodding heads. That's, that's yeah. certainly enough. Okay, great. Um, okay. Are there more staff updates? I'm sure there are. I always have a staff update. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's brief though. It's not too long. Um, this one's quick set. Thank you. Um, I know my first staff update is regarding Charmley and um, our trail crews completed all of our priority trails. So we are open for business for all of our trails. Yay. Um, <laughs> Um, the next steps we're working on is the installation of water bars. So that's to help with um, erosion mitigation and the map on the right-hand side um, is kind of our, our new priorities. So um, we hope that this will save the city some money as far as, you know, going in there and repairing trails just to give the water a place to go so it's not, you know, flowing through our trails and Causing so issues. What, what, what is a water bar exactly? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know that. Me neither. So it's kind of it's kind of like a ditch on the side uh -huh. of the trail. So the water has a place to flow rather than through the trail, um, you know, causing a big hazard or you know, we have to go back in and, and repair the trails. So um, I learned that as well just a couple weeks ago. I didn't know what that was either, but Chris is great at kind of thinking of these things because he knew it would 
you know, it would just be a long-term issue if we didn't do this and we still have the crew out there and they can, they're happy to, you know, continue on with this project. So we thought that was a good, a good thing for them to work on. So um, we started that on Monday and hope to get it done kind of I think in the next couple months or so. So we're happy to, to kind of think of that. We're happy that he thought of that and, and we hope it works. <laughs> And then I'll have, I have a couple slides regarding just, just clearance so you can have a before and after. So Clyde Canyon Trail, um, that's clear. <laughs> and then here's just another, another photo of that. So I know our trail crews sometimes go in there and take some of those bigger boulders out of the trail so it's an easier path for everyone to use. And um, <laughs> we did install the um, trail cameras. So we were excited. This was on what, Jesse, like day one we saw this? How fun. Um, Sadly, so this is the biggest thing we've caught <laughs> by happenstance. So we had to show it, even though it's uh, nature in yeah. all its glory. Well, that's, yeah. So we circle, bring circle of life. That's, right. you know, that's great, though. It's really nice to know the foxes are back and doing well. And I know the rabbits are doing well. They're all over the place there. So, um, so we purchased two cameras and we're kind of a little trial and error right now to see where, you know, we can get the best pictures. But um, we're so happy to get this. So um, wow. we use just a memory card and Chris goes over there and checks it once to twice a week. And then these are going to be posted on social media. And then we also have a page on the website that will update regularly with, you know, photos that we capture there at Charm Lake. Great. So, well done. Oh, excellent. It's all, Chris did a lot of research and he's on it. So we're appreciative of that. <laughs> Um, Legacy Park, we're doing um, some planting over there um, on December 8th. So we're adding seven new plots, which will bring us to 27 total plots. And I just wanted to include some of the um, native plants that we're, we're planning to install there. So um, we'll be irrigating that area, watching it over and still have our consultants there you know, to oversee the project and provide us with feedback. Well, that's pretty. I didn't know what flea bane was. I just looked it up on my phone. It's very pretty. I don't know. I don't know. It has pink flowers. It has pretty pink flowers and it's in the Astor family. Okay. Um, and then I, we are bringing Kate Gallo. If you haven't met her yet, she's um, our recreation manager. I just wanted to introduce her to you. Um, she's going to provide the staff updates for the next couple of slides. And I just want to say, um, Kate runs the majority of our recreation division, kind of overseeing. And over the last couple of years, she's taken on a lot of projects and she has done an excellent, excellent job at kind of getting stuff done and moving them right along. So um, Kate, if you want Hi. To Good evening, commissioners. Nice to see you. Um, we are currently in the process of remodeling the Malibu Bluffs Park office. So this is the main office um, that addresses most of the needs of the public. Um, so um, we will be putting in some new office workspaces. Um, there will be three, an additional desk. So we'll be able to have three staff members there. Um, we'll be repainting the walls, um, fresh carpet, um, new, new computers will be installed, um, and then we've addressed some ADA accessibility issues with the counters. Um, so the staff is currently operating out of a temporary office in the Michael Landon Center. Um, however, the new refreshed office um, will open to the public on Wednesday, December 1st. Uh, next slide. Uh, the city's uh, winter recreation guide and newsletter um, was released last Friday, November 12th. Um, it covers the months of December, January, and February. Um, it was released digitally, and um, the next recreation guide that will be published um, covering spring 2022, um, March, April, and May, um, that will be this our first newsletter uh, post-COVID that will be printed and mailed to all Malibu residents. Um, so this is the last of our full digital, and then we will go back 
to printing the guide and mailing it through bulk mail. Um, and for 2022, the majority of our programs will remain outdoors. Um, we will bring in some select indoor programming um, that can be remain um, distant, such as knitting and some of our you know, senior classes that don't have a lot of shared equipment and supplies. Um, and open gym basketball, um, Commissioner Scope Henry, we talked with the school district and we will be bringing that back on Wednesday, December 1st. Um, the participants will only be required to wear masks upon check-in um, when they have a symptom check as well as a temperature screening. Um, however, when they are in the gym actively participating in basketball, they do not need to wear a mask. And then if they are just on the side or if they're using the restroom, um, that'll be the only time that they are required to wear a face covering per the school district rules. Uh, Commissioner Peak, did you have a question? Yeah, I'm wondering um, why we're sending these in paper and why we're not just staying digital for environmental reasons. Kristen, yeah, 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 I was going to say I know this. Is, these are some of the questions we, yes. we've anticipated, and I I believe we talked about this um, upon our first we first presented this to the commission and and discussed it. Uh, we found that 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 while we, I mean, it would certainly be easier to produce it digitally, I can tell you this, that it, and it would save a lot of paper. Um, there are just certain portions of the population that prefer to have the guide in hand. Seniors is a really important one. And I, I think that was one of the things we discussed when, when the commission actually heard this during, I believe it was one of our staff updates um, a couple months can ago. We but not, Can we not just send it to seniors? Is that it not doesn't yeah, it doesn't quite work like that from the USPS mailing the way the distribution list works. So, um, and believe it or not, while there are certainly and this group is among them uh, people that would are fine with it digitally, we also find that we just don't reach the same number of people if it's if it's done only digitally. So, um, the senior aspect is a big component of it, but also, you know, getting it in the hands of of each home is it's just something that's important and, and that has made a difference in the past. So um, they do, I will say this, our, our contract to do this, to, to produce the brochure and mail it out was recently renewed by the city council. And as part of that agreement with this uh, producer, I guess, or distributor is uh, they have a recycling program. That's part of that. So any of the brochures that we don't use that, that we have in our stock, which is usually a significant number, anything that uh, isn't sent out through the post office, we'll actually take, and then people can come and pick those up and anything they don't use, we actually recycle back through them. So it's not a total loss, but um, that is something we considered. And, and just for us to, to get the brochure in the hands of seniors and, and a lot of people who just don't necessarily come to our city facilities to get it, um, it was important for us to reach out to them. So um, Jesse, you said you have a lot left over. Is there any way to tailor the amount that's ordered more closely to the need. Yes, so we actually purchased um, the, the addresses in the list from the post office, and we actually use those extras um, to fulfill the need at the Michael Landon Center at Bluffs Park and at the pool and at City Hall. Um, so we don't order additional copies um, for those locations in person. Um, rather, the post office just provides us with the extras, you know, depending on how many PO boxes there were at that time. And then we use those copies um, at our actual facilities. But well, does will, it get sent to P.O. boxes? It only gets sent to mailing addresses? Mailing addresses and P.O. boxes for 90264 and 90265. Oh, it does get sent to P.O. boxes. Yes. And so just depending on how many boxes are filled at that time, that's typically where we receive um, any additional copies where then we distribute at the facilities. I will say that the brochure is extremely attractive and um, it, it looks great. And I think it brings people in and it, I think it looks great. Yeah, the new design is is really nice and uh, it's got a really spacious layout with lots of negative space. I think it looks excellent. I, I, think, they've, I think they've always been terrifically designed. I, I think you guys do a really outstanding job on the brochure. She won't, uh, Kristen already said many, many great things about Kate, but one of um, the projects that Kate and, and our former recreation coordinator, Lisa Crespo took on was redesigning that, that brochure in-house and something that we typically have done to a graphic artist. Uh, they went out of their way to, to find a way to do that. Um, 
and and it does. It looks really great, and we're excited that moving forward, uh, we'll keep keep the design part of it in house unless some major thing changes where we can't do that any longer. But but Kate took that upon herself to to do, and it's really turned out great. Excellent. Yeah, love the cover photo. That's beautiful. Um, Jesse, I did, I did want to ask her, Kate, uh, on the open gym basketball, uh, is, is there a vaccine requirement or checking of that before people participate? Um, no, not at this time. Um, so for the, there are no county guidelines, um, for adult sports over the age of 18. Um, so currently we're just under the guidance of what the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District rules are. Um, and so for adult sports, they just have to be symptom screened. So we will ask them if they've been asked to isolate quarantine or if they have any COVID symptoms at that time. Um, and then we will um, take their temperature and then that would the extent of the screen. I see. The reason I'm particularly asking is because, well, first of all, a lot of places, you know, do require uh, proof of vaccination. And I think it's just kind of increasing across the planet. But um, there was a recent report that uh, noted that they, when they compared the rate of uh, COVID transmission between, these are schools, kids in school uh, and sports, versus masks uh, and some even smaller social distancing, like three uh, feet. The sports was the place where much of it was uh, communicated. So I think that's something that we should keep in mind. We may wanna change that in terms of at least a vaccine requirement. I, I think Georgia, we have to follow, we're doing it in a school facility. So you have to follow the rules set by them. I mean, the city can't create their own that's and that's that's a, a really great point, Commissioner Villablanca. Um, regardless, <laughs> I, I know we've we've erred on the side of caution and and throughout a lot of the pandemic, we have followed LA County guidelines, not throughout a lot, all of the pandemic. We followed LA County guidelines and um we've had times where though we've had many people that felt they were too strict. And now we find we're finding a lot of people feel like they the opposite. Some feel it can be a little too loose. And so it's really difficult for us because we're we've sided with the LA County guidelines through the entire pandemic, and so as much as you know, we we agree and on some of those things, especially basketball being such a contact sport, um, we're trying really hard not to be hypocritical on our end and say no, we followed the LA County guidelines as exactly how they were worded before, and then now we're kind of choosing not to, you know, and so that's the it is difficult for us because I know. Everybody has a different opinion. That's, that's what a that's public the, health the department is. That. That's their job to review the data <laughs> and make a recommendation. So I, you know, I just think information is is always good, and and this is this was just yeah. published recently. Well, hopefully, the I mean, I mean, the county should be looking at that stuff too. But I, you know, I mean, you have, as I always say, you need to be consistent. You could be if you're consistently wrong, you'll find out where the problem is. If you keep varying things, you know, you don't really know. If everybody creates their own rules. So I don't know. I do, it's a very complex and, and obviously uh, a lot of people feel differently about it. So I think you follow the, the county guidelines. That's a consistent thing you've done. I mean, to me that individuals can do more or less within that, but. Hey, Jesse, um, what are you guys going to do to protect the city employee that, that, that shows up there to, to open and check temps and stuff like that? Uh, Commissioner Scopehammer, we're actually going to set out a check-in table um, outside of the gymnasium. Um, so our staff member will remain outside. Um, they are required to wear a face covering. Um, and then we'll, we will have the two separate containers um, for pens. And so um, each player, as they come up, they will be wearing their mask. They will sign our waiver, um, which has been updated with all the communicable disease language um, through our risk management department. Um, so the extent of our staff interacting with them is just to take their temperature um, and to write it down on a sheet of paper. And all of that will take place outside of the gymnasium. And then we'll also leave um, the majority of the doors open uh, for cross ventilation. Do we have like I, oh, go big ahead, fans or anything to put in the gym at the same time? Would that have any effect? Is that a good idea? We have that ability. Um, I can look into that if that's um if that's something that's recommended by the county. In yeah, terms I, you of know what? I take it back. It's it, it's probably not, and it's probably <laughs> ineffective. <laughs> I just thinking about it. Like, I mean, you know, maybe it would help, but um, I 
we don't know it would and better to be consistent. Nobody's telling us to do it. So we probably shouldn't. Yeah. That, that's what I think. Be this consistent, is, then this you, is yeah. voluntary. People are hopefully going to have the good sense not to show up if they're having symptoms and what else can you do? It's, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. Can I ask a question about the youth basketball before we move on or would it be better to do that at a later time? Absolutely, you can answer your question. So last time we were on, I think I was asking about the kids wearing masks because it's an organized sport for the basketball. Mm -hmm. So you guys were gonna re re talk to SMM USD and I was just wondering if yes. you guys did and what they said. Yeah, so we did verify with the school district um, and whether the, whether the participants are inside or outside, um, the masks are required um, for minors or students. Um, so should that change now before? Hold on though. Even though it's an organized sport, because they agreed that if it's an organized sport, the kids do not have to wear masks. I verified that they're required to wear them um, during their own physical education classes, whether they're inside or outside. Um, they, so they don't, they're not, they don't wear them during PE. I, the difficult part for us is that we're, we're, we're contacting the district and asking them what, you know, what their policies or their standards are. I don't know if you're seeing something different. Um, and you even sent the them like, is. remember, cause I, I sent you guys the exact verbiage of how yep. they have it worded yep. and they still said masks are required. And I know that's, uh, we, we did follow up. We spoke with them. That's the information they gave us. So it, it's difficult for us because we're, that's what they're telling us. Right. And I know there's some, I know there's a lot of back and forth as far as like the specific language of rules and things like that. And that's something that we're, we're dealing with. We've been dealing with the whole pandemic. And I think that's what this is in this case as well. I don't, I don't know if there's certain schools that are, are choosing to enforce it or not, but that's the feedback we've received from the district. And I will say, um, Kate is our, our main priority contact for the district. And, and so she was the one who did that initial outreach for us after the last meeting. Um, and that's, that's what we have. So um, okay, I can verify be, she's not, not, not fudging on that. <laughs> would it be helpful if I emailed them or is that more hurt? Is, does that more hurt you guys? I would like uh, Kate, I, maybe you answer that. I don't know if it helps or hurts us more or not. <laughs> I verified with the, um, the COO and I verified with the facility permits department, um, both of them in terms of um, that and, and also any rules that might pertain to our open gym basketball program, because I did have to email them, you know, they, these are, this is what we would take to keep the adults safe. So I addressed um, both the youth and the adult basketball separately um, with two or three different contacts and um, all the messaging was fairly consistent on what they wanted um, the city to do in terms of our facility use. Kate, would you have, um, would you have the language? Could they just send you the language and, or is that not possible? Yeah, I'd be happy to email, to uh, to reach out and ask them to provide that language. It just might help clarify. What yeah. the is. Not a problem. I mean, I'm just over here, like on all these meetings with the with the school district, and it's just very upsetting because the board has agreed that if kids are playing organized sports, they do not have to wear masks. So that's where I'm really I don't understand. We can have adults in a gym without masks playing, but we can't have kids outside without them. You know. I'd be happy to reach out to them again. Thanks. Well, no, I think I will reach out to them and I will ask them just like, not, to, not for you guys, but just in terms of clarifying for me, just as a citizen. I, don't I, think, it, I think it doesn't hurt to have the language because there may be other people that have questions about this. And if you have the language there, you can just, you know, communicate that or send it that to them might make it easier. Not a problem, I'll reach out to them again. Thank you. Okay. And lastly, um, our department part-time staff have been participating in um, various safety trainings. Um, in November earlier, uh, we completed uh, CPR training, first aid training, AED training, and um, for the recreation staff that um, oversee sports programs, uh, they also participated in the CDC concussion prevention and awareness training, um, which is required by California law for any staff member that is overseeing sports programs. Next slide. 
Um, just uh, sorry to interrupt you briefly, but um, is there any thought that, that those classes might be available to the public? I mean, in a you know, different venue, obviously, but it seemed like a good idea. In terms of the CPR and first aid, yes. Um, so they're typically offered through our public safety office um, through Susan Duenas and Sarah Kaplan. Um, and I believe that they started offering them for 13 members at this time. Um, but I do believe that they're looking to expand them to the general public. In the past, they had been offered to the public and they've also been offered um, bilingual trainings. Um, so I do believe that they're looking to expand them. Um, they just started with 13 members first. I see, excellent, thank you. And then finally, just to wrap, um, I know we do this, we've done this each month of the, over the last couple of months, but just giving you an update on, on some of the assignments from the commission. Um, I know the Earth Friendly Working Group has been a, a fairly quiet this month. I should say not fairly quite quiet. Uh, we are close to wrapping up the um, our Earth Friendly Malibu campaign for a logo, um, our, our basically our our campaign where we have where we have people where we will have people design and submit submit their logo that they would like to be used for it. So we just about have that info done, and then we'll schedule a working group meeting. Uh, so you should see that here within the next couple of days by the end of the week at, at the very latest. So um, invasive non natives on the Trancus open space. Uh, I know we've talked about that the last couple of meetings. Um, Chris is actually doing the removal work of the castor, I'm sorry, the castor bean and tree tobacco uh, tomorrow in the non Esha area of the space. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Um, so he is actually completing that work tomorrow and, and going out there and we'll keep working to, uh, as we talked about, have MCS complete that work. We were trying to get that contract or our agreement with MCS to complete that work on the next council agenda, but we're, we're struggling to get all the agreement stuff together and signed. And there's always a lot of back and forth between uh, our attorneys and then getting it signed. And then we have such uh, far advanced, far in advance deadlines for our city council agenda. So um, as soon as we have the expected date on that, which we only have one meeting in December, which makes it a little bit tough. So it will most likely be the first meeting in January, and then we'll get rolling as quick as we can on that work. So uh, we think there's there's no issues on from what we've seen so far in, in prepping for that. So we suspect that will go through without issue. So we'll have that moving here as we get into the new year. Um, Thank you. I appreciate trail that. Trail cameras. Yeah. Uh, trail cameras at, cameras at Charm Lee. Um, complete. Maybe some cooler photos. I demanded from Chris that we need Bobcat. <laughs> We need mountain lion photos. So if we don't have mountain lion photos, uh, I said this whole project would be for not. So he's assured us we will get some mountain lion photos at some point and not just foxes with rabbits. And then we have trail cameras at Legacy. I don't know if we would tip, if there'd be really trail cameras, but we're trying to do some of the same things at Legacy where we can hopefully catch some birds and, and things like that, which if you've walked through the park and seen it, it's got a, a crazy variety of, of bird life from hawks to... Um, I want to say it's egrets. I don't know if that's the official term for, um, for, for the, the big white storky looking bird, but, um, I'm not egrets. an ornithologist. So yes, the white the egrets. egrets yes. Yeah. yes. So, uh, maybe I am an ornithologist then. Um, so, uh, update to park signage. We've actually finalized some updated signage. I know the commission had asked us for some stickers to put over, um, our current signs to, to basically highlight and make the number bigger for our Lost Hill Sheriff Station. Um, fortunately, I think we mentioned this, we'd already had some new signs in development and those are finalized now. So we will look to have those up and any of the signs, if there's parts where we actually don't replace the signage, we will have the sticker that goes on the sign. Um, I don't know if this is a park docent program update per se, but one update we have is that uh, Chris Orris has been working to clean out the Charmley Nature Center that's up there and in working with Nareet and Sandy to do that. So uh, it's not the most savory building to be in right now, but they've made some really excellent progress <laughs> in cleaning it up and trying to catalog the things we have that are still good and then make improvements to some of the areas, um, such as trying to lower some of the cabinets, which are even I can't reach. And I'm, I'm on my tippy toes trying to get to the bottom of them. So um, and then continue to work on, on other things like some of the requested classes and workshops as well. 
Um, oddly enough, when we were out at Charmley, we did see mountain bikers out there. So we, we laughed, we said, oh, mountain bikers, maybe we need to get them to teach a class. So, um, but all in all, there is a lot of work still going on at Charmley that I know the commission hasn't seen, but we're going to continue to give you updates on that, uh, moving forward. Cause that, that nature center has been a, been a pretty big, uh, task. Yeah. Um, Jesse, I, I just wanted to comment on, uh, legacy. Um, the butterfly gardens and whatnot. Um, I, first of all, there was a time when I, that was maybe a month ago, uh, when I walked through there and I think they're the golden bush. Uh, I don't know, Suzanne would know. They were just, they were everywhere and they were just sparkling in the sunlight. It, it was stunning. It was really stunning. And there's been, and there's still coyote bush blooming, which is just like a, Chaparral Christmas tree, really, I think. Um, and so I don't know if we could get some photos, you know, at different times of the year of those. I, I just think it would be really good, you know, outreach and branding and it's just so appealing. Um, so I don't know if that's a possibility. And yes, and we have that note from last meeting to try and get some photos of it up on our website. I think that was your, your recommendation yeah. at our last meeting. So that is on our list and uh, Kristen knows this. Uh, that golden bush is my favorite planet legacy because it, it always it looks so good at certain times of the year. And when we started the rehabilitation project, um, that was the plant that that really stuck out. And it just, it, it is, it's the, I feel like it's the most abundant plant, and especially in that middle area and around the, the, just the outside of some of those walkways. So it's, it is really beautiful. And we also uh, not that it's the same area, but we have some brittle bush. Um, I will mess up the, the Latin name of it, but over at the temporary skate park, the roundabout in the parking lot there, it's, oh. I know it's not necessarily on the way anywhere, but drive by and check it out. They're in full bloom in the middle oh. of that. And we were just commenting this morning, how great they looked. So yeah. um, legacy, yeah. legacy really is doing well under the new uh, company. I, I just was over there recently. It looks really great. Big improvement yeah. and getting the water back too. So that's all good. Yes. And I, I, I will. This would, be, big one. this would be, a, I'm sorry, this would be an update actually um, for the future. Uh, there's an early blooming and reputedly the most beautiful milkweed, uh, Californica. Uh, and um, uh, I just connected someone who gathered the seeds um, and has grants to do that. Um, with Antonio Sanchez from the um, SAMO Fund. And so he will be growing those. And I would hope that they would be available, not this year, right? But next year, some of them for the, for the gardens here. Yeah, and if you, if we'll certainly have, have Chris check in on that, but yeah. if you, if you happen to have some info or you see something, please send that to us. That would be really helpful. I know sometimes we're, we're running around like crazy. So it, it would definitely, yeah. like I said, if you have anything, don't, don't hesitate to share it. Okay, great. Thank you. And then the last thing I had is I, I just wanted to remind the commission that you have a December 21st regular meeting in December. So um, just wanted to make sure that that day works for the commission. Um, I know there's always a, always falls in that Christmas time where it's a little hectic and crazy. Um, I, I, I think I, class, I would make a motion to cancel the, cancel the meeting to give the staff a little Christmas holiday because it's a lot of work to get ready for these meetings. To clarify, we don't get the day off work. Um, we will I know, still I know, I know but, it, but it just, <laughs> it eases, it just, and you don't have to stay late for a meeting either. You may be staying late anyway to do your work, but I, I would be okay with uh, not holding it. I don't know how the other commissioners feel. Second. Um, okay, so the motion's been made. A roll call, please. Actually, I would. We we actually don't. We could just by consensus. Um, okay. I don't think we need a motion to cancel, do we, Brittany? I don't. I, I think it's just no, up the consensus don't. of the commission. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I saw some nodding, and I heard at least heard a second. So. Yeah. Uh, and that's it for staff updates. 
Okay. Um, well, uh, we're now to the comment period. Um, does anybody have any comments? Suzanne? No? Judy? Thank you for all your work you've done this year. I think it's just, you've gotten a lot done with a lot of hurdles. So thank you. Yeah, um, I second that. Alicia? Um, I'm just wondering if you guys were able to ask the district about the pool situation. We were. I'll let Kate um, add anything I miss here. Um, but when we heard that, we suspected that may not be accurate. Um, we are in fairly regular communication with uh, Carrie Upton, and and we're we're uh, very much the pool is such a big part of what we do. We're, yeah. we're typically aware of that, and I believe their email Kate was that there are there are no plans to shut the pool down in any way, shape, or form. Um, I apologize for my background. It wants to go in and out uh, today. Um, but yeah, I did receive an email back from the COO, Carrie, Upta uh, Carrie Upton. Uh, the district has no plans to close the pool um, for anything other than minimally scheduled maintenance and uh, that they will always notify us in advance. Um, they will not, they are going to be constructing the new pool um, in either phase two or phase three of the Malibu campus plan. Um, those phases still require additional funding and the earliest that they would go out for another bond would be 2024 and they won't close the existing pool um, until they open the new pool and they won't be going out for that bond until 2024. So um, that will be our pool for the, for the near future. Thank you. Dan? Uh, yeah. I wanted to make a motion to agendize uh, item nine on the, um, I don't know, what is that? The year? Our, work, our work list. Our work list for the year. So when we come back from Christmas and all that, we can all have read up on the master plan and be ready to discuss a location or something, a park. Would be cool. I would second that. Okay. Real Again, I would just, uh, we just need a consensus, unless it's super contentious not to agendize it for I'd, I'd some reason. I'd love to talk about it. I think about. that's great. Otherwise, a consensus is fine. Yeah, great. <laughs> okay. That's great. Anything else, Dane? Uh, no. Okay. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, happy holidays. That's great. Thank holidays. you. Hang on. I have something before oh, we go. Oh, no. Yeah, just a couple of uh, quick things. One is uh, to mention that in the infrastructure bill, I, I was hoping it might be something that would apply to Malibu, but just from the um, you know very basic information that I have, it doesn't look like it. But what it is is for habitat reconstruction for roadsides, and there's ten million dollars a year for. Uh, five years. So I think that's good. And so that's appropriate wildflowers, uh, native grasses, uh, milkweed and other host plants and to monitor the mowing, mowing strategies so that they are most protective of the plants and animals, uh, removing non-native grasses from seed mixes and uh, um, implementing integrated vegetation management plans. So I just feel like that is Another area where it's very good that the government is doing something that I think we've exemplified in Malibu. Um, so uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Um, and then the uh, other thing is an interesting article uh, that was described in the Revelator, which I, um, which is from the Center for Biological Diversity, and I sent the staff, but I'd be happy to forward it to uh, the rest of you if you'd like. Um, basically, uh, it's on property rights uh, for animals, and um, it's quite interesting, and uh, there's some legal experts at, at very high levels that uh, support this, so I'd just like to read uh, a couple of comments so that you uh, understand what this is, that uh, wild animals should be integrated into our system of property law to prevent further habitat destruction which is the leading cause of species extinction. And it's, uh, another quote is, it's an inter interspecies system of property where animals and people would co-own the land 
through a legal trust. And this has uh, roots in the indigenous communities um, in both uh, Klamath River uh, in Oregon and um, in a rainforest in New Zealand. So I just, uh, oh, even pre-colonial um, indigenous uh, systems supported this. Um, and it's also established by state laws because of the pet trust uh, laws that um, have been uh, enacted, you know, in more recent times. So I just wanted to mention that and uh, it's out there. Anybody can let me know if they'd like a copy or they can get it from the staff because I've sent that. And that's it for me. So any questions, any more thoughts? If not, let's have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. Okay. Aim. Great. Roll call. Commissioner Goderman. Aye. Commissioner Skopammer. Aye. Commissioner Villablanca. Yes, and happy holidays. Vice Chair Peak. Yes. Chair Goldfarb. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for all your hard work and thoughtfulness. 